Did you know you can cook villagers? And in return you get blood. That is a fantastic mechanic. But hello everyone and welcome to another episode of All The Mods 9. How are you guys doing today? How's life? In between the episodes I have spent a lot of time in the twilight forest and as a result we have tons of ores. We have 12,000 coal. But mainly I was looking for redstone. We have 1,500. Almost. Then I remembered we didn't kill the bosses. Hello Naga. One day I'm gonna change my sword. We're both snared. And I guess hello Mr. Leech. I hate those shields. One left. All of them are gone. Cool. I think he died. Yes. Oh damn. <laughs> I forgot we can't fly. And I did it again. <laughs> and down here in the maze, we're looking for... Not cockroaches. Yes. Minotaurs. I want the meat. Well, I guess now that we're here, we might as well kill the boss. Give me your flesh. Thank you. Oh, that was... Fast? Hello? Nice. We have Meath Wellington. It's actually a decent food. It gives you strength, regeneration, glowing is not very important, and nourishment. So it's like way better than the shepherd's pie that I was making. Also, this is literally the only type of food which the platter also stacks. I'm not gonna complain. I should empty my backpack. Anyways, food aside, we have other priorities, which is automation. I said that weird, I don't know why. I think our first order of business is to start automating the production of Certus Quartz. So I have upgraded my inscribers, they work a teeny tiny bit faster. And I have also realized that there are villagers for applied energistics. And you know, the best part of it is he does sell you Certus Quartz, you can charge it, and you can sell it back to get a profit. It's just that they don't really trade that often. So automating the budding Certus Quartz is going to be the easiest thing that we should be able to do. I can actually demonstrate it. We will have an ME annihilation plane, and remember it is hooked up to power and we're not using a channel so this should work. We are also going to have a storage bus and for demonstration purposes one chest. So if I put something in front of the annihilation plane it's gonna break it and put it inside the chest. The problem is that if the Certus Quartz bud has not grown fully what you're going to get is just dust. What we want is the actual Certus Quartz. So we can just have a drawer, put some Certus Quartz inside and maybe lock it and then we can have our annihilation plane somewhere up here. We're not gonna do it up here. This is just for demonstrations. So as long as the Certus Quartz is not fully grown, the Annihilation Plane is not going to harvest it because it doesn't have any space to put it. There's no space for the dust, only for the crystal. Yep, exactly. We have 17. And it seems that in this version of Applied Energy Sticks, you can also fortune it. The Annihilation Plane, so that you get more Certus. For Certus, I don't really think it's going to be that important because it does grow super fast and you get four each time. Yeah, every time you get four. But fortune is something that we are going to use for ore processing because we want to process ores using applied energy sticks. We just want to fortune them. Hello? You have been busy? <laughs> I needed some gold. I think some of them despawned. Yeah. So now the question is, do we need two budding Certus Quartz or one will do? Yeah, who cares? We have two. We use two. So I have transferred the budding Certus Quartz over here. We have our Annihilation Plane. We have a drawer over here, which is not locked and it's not really hooked up to an Ender Chest, but it does work. And since we are only using two channels for the Annihilation Planes, we're just using an Energy Acceptor. It's actually decently fast. I have already emptied the drawer once. So for the ore processing part, we need some Isnium. And I just broke it. Forgot about the pick. This time, let's not mess it up. Lovely. I was going to say how deep this one is going to be. Well, we're at bedrock. The reason that we need Isnium is that I need to make five more extra dimensional shafts. And well, for each of them, we need a block of Isnium. So that is 45. I have four ores. That is 24 ingots. We're close. And we are getting closer. That was it. You should always look for more. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back from the nether. We have our Isnium blocks. And now we should have our dimensional mine shafts. I always forget this stupid extra step. Um, yes, uh, take number two. We shall have our dimensional mine shaft, I guess. Also, over here, you might notice a very small experiment using a witch. I did receive a very weird comment from Lord Broth. You know, the person who's buried here and doesn't have a soul. That if you put life mending on a tool and give it to a witch, the witch is going to heal himself and also going to mend the tool. I had no idea, but witches have an inventory and if you use an omnidirectional hopper with an entity tracker upgrade, you can give the witch any item. I'm immune to poison, you idiot. But in any case, we can give him a sapling. And since it's not going to do anything with that sapling, it's over here. And yes, we also get the potions. It's a very interesting idea. The problem is that I gave this guy my shovel like half an hour ago. 
and I think it's still being repaired, so I'm not sure if it's fast enough. Also, it's fine if I lose the shovel. The shovel was not great. It was just a diamond shovel. But here's the thing, a diamond shovel has a durability of 1561. He suggested that we use that for the Morid Miner, and that one has a durability of 1600. So it's slightly more than a diamond shovel. Just in case you're wondering what the hell is it that we are trying to do, if we want to use our miners inside the dimensional mine shaft, they're going to lose durability. Yeah, this one has mending. So if I put it in, the output is full, so it's not going to generate any ores. And it also has unbreaking, so there is a chance of losing durability. Yep, now it did. So once in a while, we have to take these guys out and repair them. There is something from Evil Craft, which I don't really mind doing it. Uh, the problem is that it does require a few other gizmos. I think the easiest solution is to just put it inside an Ender IO tank with some experience. And it doesn't work with one durability. So we put it in again. Yeah, it repaired two durability. But it's instant. There is a mat involved, which I'm not really sure how it works. This is why it didn't repair the last durability. It took ages for the dimensional mineshafts to be ready, and I still have no shovel. This one seems to be a bit slow. I did try it with like one or two durability losses, but uh, more than that, it just takes a very long time. Also, the lamp has lost almost 90 durability. Let's see how fast this one is. Almost instant. So I guess we're going to roll with Ender IO. Also, do I at least get my shovel back? Uh oh, maybe not. Moving on just a bit, I pressed the wrong button. I don't have shaders. I don't want to have shaders. I hate shaders. But at first I wanted to use applied energistics, formation planes and annihilation planes in order to fortune the ores and put them into our system. Then I received a very important comment. Apparently, you would be able to put the Morit Crusher inside a containment jar, like so. And since this is done because of a mod, it can also do ore processing. Can you? It's not going in. Did you give me the wrong information? I think you gave me the wrong information. Now I have a Morid in a jar. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the mod that you were talking about is in the pack. I have to get him out of the jar. Never mind. I'll use Applied Energistics. It's much more fun. Well, let me correct myself. It's not fun, but at least it works fine. I'm using Applied Energistics as a sorting system, as well as breaking blocks using annihilation planes. This long cable that you see over here is actually three different networks. One of them is for Certus Quartz, and then you might notice we have a quartz fiber which does not transfer the channels, only the power, so this is another network, and there is one more up there which is purple. We do have six dimensional mineshafts, two of them have the miner inside, they are hooked up to pipes and everything goes into that barrel over there, inside here. There is also an import bus which goes into the controller, which finally it comes to these formation planes over here. Some of them have filters for metals and some of them for the normal ores. And well, the annihilation planes are not great, one of them has fortune 5, the other one has fortune 3 didn't have good books. The annihilation plane is going to break the ores, some of them have to be cooked, so I do have a storage bus with filters, they go inside the furnace, and into a dimensional chest. The other ores like lapis and redstone, they're just getting broken and go into the dimensional chest using another storage bus. Since the system doesn't really have an inventory, whatever goes inside the chest is being imported, is being placed down, then it's being broken, and it's being processed. But before being able to complete this thing, I think I need to have an angel ring because climbing up scaffolding is not really fun. So if we want to make an angel ring, yes, we're going to need netherite, vibranium, unobtainium, and all the modium. Vibranium, we don't need that much, one block, and we already have it. Unobtainium is not a problem, all the modium is. Also the nether stars, but we will fix that. To get some all the modium, let us get some all the modium site. We can convert it into the charm. This is from Apotheosis, and I guess we enchant it with some mending. Oh, we can't do that. What? No, you can just have unbreaking. Uh, well, I guess that's fine. I should be able to repair it using the graves, but can I get unbreaking? No, no you can't enchant it in any way. So last episode, I think from the Piglage Pyramid, we did manage to loot a few enchanted stuff. That means I can hold the sword in my hand, a disenchantment book on my offhand, and just right click on a soul. It's going to disenchant the sword and give us the books. So now can I put unbreaking on it? Yeah, unbreaking five. We can also repair it the same way. So if we turn the charm on, we should be able to find some old modium. You don't actually find it in the ancient city, you find it in the deep dark. Oh, hello, another warden. You see, in the ancient city, there's nothing over there. There is something that is it. I'm going to release the Morid later on. So eventually each one of these raw ores is going to give us six dust. Oh, the range is good. I think they have improved it since all the mods ate. We have darkness. Oh, there's more shriekers. <laughs> That's 46 ores. It's going to give me like 300 ingots. I hate shriekers, by the way. Oops. This is the last one we're going to take. We don't need anything more. 
but there's more there. Well, if it's on the way, why not? We have 63 and a zombie spawner. Cool. Oh, another spawner. But very cool. We have what we need. Let us go home. Basically, I want to get my Morit back and I did not find it in the book, but I think you have to use this spell. Okay. That worked. So he's processing all the modium. That is great. How much is there left? You're slow. We are going to need some nether stars in order to make the angel ring. And this is something that I should have done earlier in this series, but we were not generating any power. Basically, what I have done is that I have made two data models and one deep learner. In this way, if we kill a few withers, which I think the number is exactly six, uh, we don't have to kill withers ever again. We're just going to stick it in a machine and simulate them. So you just right click with the data model, put the data models inside the deep learner, and we just have to kill the wither. So now if I open it, yeah. We have collected one data, five more to go. That could have ended badly. We need to change the sort very soon. But yeah, if we take our data models, both of them are basic. And yeah, I did make two data models because we can upgrade them at the same time, just in case we're going to need a lot of nether stars. But very good. Now we should start making our angel ring. Oh, diamonds. I just realized that I might not have diamonds. Netherite is not a problem. We still have two blocks. So here is my diamond ring. I do understand that I have one netherite furnace, so one old modium furnace. We just need one more. Ladies and gentlemen, the angel ring. So this one is kind of garbage. It works with experience. If we want the good one, we have to upgrade it to the energetic angel ring, which to be perfectly honest with you, it's actually not that expensive. There you go. We also need to wirelessly charge it, but we will do that later on. For the moment, Oh, you can't charge it, okay. Then we shall wirelessly charge it. So there is something from Pawa, which is called an Aerial Pearl. And I'm not exactly sure, but I think we should also make the card. I just remembered I can't fly. Anyways, with the Pearl, we just need to have a zombie. And for the binding card, we need an Enderman. Come on. Okay, it's not bound to me. The color looks different. It doesn't say dimensional. Anyways, what we're going to do is that we're going to make a player transmitter. This is basic. This should be hardened. Not sure how far we can go. Blazing, okay. Niotic, spirited, and can I go to Nitro? Ah, we don't have the crystals. That is perfectly fine. For the moment, you go over there. And here is my card. The angel ring is charged. We can wear it and we should be able to fly. Perfect. That kills your FPS if you fly very fast. Yeah, working like this is like way better. Uh, also, I was processing some Isnium, then I remembered maybe the Annihilation Plane is not going to break it, but apparently it does. So if I set a filter for Isnium or over here, you should place it. If I set a filter for raw Isnium for the furnace, you should break it. And you should cook it? Huh. I wasn't expecting that. And yeah, you might notice that we have a bit of a problem. These are all the ores from Greg Tech, and we can't really process them now. The issue is that I think most of them have to be macerated twice because, you know, you will get the crushed version. If you macerate it again, you're going to get a byproduct as well as the impure version. And then you have to wash it to get the actual dust. And obviously electrolyzed. So for the moment, we have to just keep them because here's the thing well obviously we can make a steam macerator we can even make the lv one you know we can have cheaty steel and wrought iron we can even go to mv because we do have the aluminium but we still need the stupid circuits and i don't have any of them okay ladies and gentlemen we have our miners we have our ore processing but now we need to start repairing those miners the way that the dimensional mine shaft works is that you can extract the ores from the bottom or from the sides but you can only interact with the miner inside from the top so these pipes are going to transfer the ores and these pipes are going to transfer the miners so let us see how we want to do that i have some item pipes we have some upgrades and we want to set redstone mode on when powered i'm not really sure if this is going to work we're just going to try something with a flick of a lever we want all the lamps to go inside this barrel so here is the lever we flick it yes they went in. So now if we have our Ender IO tank with experience over here, here's what we should be able to do. We want to pull the items from the barrel. You know, we can configure it from here. And yeah, it took the miner. It didn't take the other one, which is fine. I think it doesn't have experience, but now we need to entangle a few blocks because uh, I'm running out of sides. So here's an entangled binder. You need Ender chests for each and every one. Anyways, we get some entangled blocks. So we're going to entangle this Ender IO tank to this entangled block. I didn't really pay attention to the chunk boundaries, so we can't really put anything here. But let us get some experience. Come on. Something over here is killing my frame rates. Don't know what it is. I'm really hoping it's not AE2, but basically, we are going to extract the XP into the entangled block. Yeah, it's being filled in. So now it can repair the lamps. Perfect. And now that we have repaired the lamps, we need to put them back in. 
Ah, which I should have paid more attention to my cabling, but if we have the entangled block here instead of down there, we can have a few pipes, then we will have more entangled blocks and we're going to entangle them to the mine shafts. So in this way, we're extracting the repaired lamps and putting them back inside the mine shaft from the top. So if I drop you in, you should go to the first one. Exactly. This is the second one. You should go to the second one. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> so we just do it with the rest, I guess. Like so. And I have to go and enchant the rest of the lamps. There you go. I have not put on breaking on them yet, but this should work. It only has mending. Also, I'm missing a lamp. Oh, I don't know where the lamp went. Okay, we have a problem. I just had to load the backup because the Ender Ario tank is voiding the lamps. It voided like five of them. If you put the lamps inside the Ender Ario tank slowly, yeah, it's not going to have a problem. But if you put all six of them at the same time, it's going to void some of them. Oh, look, a flying llama. Let me help you with the gravity. Yeah, much better. I have misjudged Ender I.O. Apparently the problem is not with the Ender I.O. tank, it's with the dimensional mineshaft. So when you already have a miner inside the dimensional mineshaft and you try to put another one, it voids both of them. It's amazing. I know. But I think the solution is going to be simple. We're just going to have different conduits. You know, I'm using conduits instead of pipes because you can insert and extract using the same side. We could have also used the Fatty card from Applied Energy Sticks, but this will also do. Did I void a tank? Where is it? It's okay, we use this one. So the way that I'm going to configure it is that we're going to make the extraction work with a redstone signal. We also put it on insert. From the tank to the mine shaft, we're just going to ignore redstone. Like so. So over here, we do have a married miner. And if I flick the lever, it should go into the tank, get repaired, and goes back into the dimensional mine shaft. And yeah, we didn't void anything. It's just that we need experience, you know, just to be able to fill the tanks. How much does this give me? 40 levels is not that bad. Also, if you use two singularity tanks, it's going to drain your experience faster. You can also use four. For making the repair fully automatic, we are going to use a timer from RF tools. It's going to be set on 5000 ticks. I have no idea how much is that in seconds. It's going to power the conduit, it's going to extract the Marit, and it's going to put it inside the tank. And I guess from next episode, we should also think about the Greg Tech ores, because this is going to get out of hand very soon. I do have stack upgrades, but that's 16 stacks. Anyways, just before we wrap up today's episode, there are a few things that I want to do. I'm disintegrating. What the hell? That was weird. I don't want to die. So what we want to do is to get into a bit of Mahotsukai because I really need to change my stupid sword. We need around 5000 Mahu in order to get the Morgan. So here's what we're going to do. Oh, and by the way, I haven't done much. The only thing that I did is that I made myself the dagger from Mahotsukai. I stabbed myself and drew Mahu, you know? The circle. And for generating a teeny tiny bit of Mahu, what we're going to do is that we're going to do some durability exchange. It's emerald, emerald, diamond. So let us get our pestle and mortar, powdered emerald, powdered diamond, just the one. I guess for the moment we can just have a chest. We stab and draw. No? Well, I guess we can draw like this. Yeah. Then break the stone and then use a chest. So one diamond, two emeralds, and we just need to put some garbage inside. That should give us Mahu. It's not going to be amazing. So based on the amount of durability that the tool is going to lose, we are going to get some Mahu. And I guess we go with iron shovels. I have plenty of iron. Early on, it's just going to be a pain because our buffer is just 105. So I have to bank it every like three seconds, but it's fine. We already have almost 800 in our Atium diamond. So power consolidation is super easy. We just need two diamonds. We have almost 7,000 Mahu, which is not that bad. We add one emerald and yes, the lake is growing. Is it the max size? Nope. I always wanted to use this as some sort of a fog effect within the base, but unfortunately you can't really do that because if you're in it, you can't see anything. And well, if you're not in it, it doesn't have any effect. So this is why we're doing it outside the base. That's it. So in order to exchange the sword, the sword has to be enchanted and we do have a few bits. Bane of Atropods. Why not? We need 5,000 Mahu in order to switch the sword. So you go in. Lovely. I'll go find it. Come on, we have Caliburn. So this is a holy sword, but it's also not that amazing because first off, I'm not a holy person. Secondly, if you hold it in your hand, the undead are going to run away. Yeah, so for converting it, what we need to do is to find a stupid wolf, which I think I saw one, yes. Yay, you're my friend. Go to heaven. Wait, why you not convert? I just went to Reddit and yeah, there is a bit of a problem. Let's get some Oldemodium apples first. It seems instead of a dog, you have to kill the warden. Did I break all the catalysts? Ah oh, no, there is one there. Activate. It's too far away. Ah, yes. 
Perfect. Oh, there's two of them. We just need the one. Oh, you're a mimic. Applies an extra level of fortune to mind blocks. Why the hell not? Come on. Spawn, dude. Okay. We have a warden. We eat the apple. And kill the warden. Really not going well. Yeah, I thought the apple was going to be amazing. <laughs> it's not. My food is better. Die before killing me. Yeah. It worked. We have the Morgan. You guys already know how it works. The way that we upgrade it is that we need to kill villagers. Babies have a bonus. Now that we have a decent sword, uh, let us get to experience. But before doing that, uh, I realized the problem. So the tanks of experience ran out and almost all the lamps were broken. We don't really want to lose the lamps. That is a dimensional tank or an ender tank. We can hook it up to some sort of a singularity tank. And you know, transfer some experience. Until we can automate it using a mob farm or something. Is it having any effect? Because I've been standing there for a while. Oh boy. Well, at least these ones are full. Also, last night I was watching Dr. Rage and I noticed that there is a new mod called Create Enchantment Industry. And there is something called Liquid Experience. I'm not sure if you can make an infinite source from this. You know, if we put 10,000 blocks of it in a hole and then pump it out. It's just that getting that much experience is the problem. Maybe not. There is something for mystical agriculture. Now that we have some experience, I just made myself a book of disenchantment and we're going to disenchant our old sword. Nobody has a soul. You have a soul. Thank you, Fallen Cubit. Ah, it's the other way around. So we have extracted seven of the books. And we're out of souls. But we have our sharpness on breaking, severing is good, and sweeping edge. To be honest with you, the rest of them aren't that useful. Ah, we need experience. We're out of XP. But you can't put mending on the Morgan. You see, this one has mending. It's fine. We do have some orbs. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so it has been a bit of time later and I have upgraded the Morgan, but just a bit. We are doing just above 28 damage, which is not that bad. You might also notice that there is an innate cap, which can be easily removed by throwing a few nether stars together with the Morgan inside the pond that we have over there. But unfortunately in this mod pack, you need something very special and all the mods star. So 100 damage it is, for a very long time at least. Also, I kind of remembered why the hell can't you put mending on the Morgan. It's because that, well, if you kill villagers, it's going to be repaired. It's a lovely mechanic that you sharpen your sword with villagers. No, but I did also work a teeny tiny bit on the hole that we have over here. I just cleaned it up just a bit. And you know, safety comes first, so we do have a safety net. And also a floodlight from immersive engineering. We don't really want mobs down there. I wanted to do something very small before we wrap up today's episode. Somebody has an ancient soul. Aditya, I always knew you were special. But anyways, as I was saying, I wanted to do a very small project before we wrap up today's episode. But next episode, I want to have a very small auto crafting area, maybe on top of this hill. Because you know, if I want to make a nitro energy cell from power, look at the amount of crafting that I have to do by hand which is a lot. It's not going to be anything special, it's just going to be the alloys from mechanism, industrial foregoing and power. I need a few machines and I can't make them right now. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye. Also I have to fix the holes. <laughs> bye bye.